everyone and welcome back to my block detection project. Um, I've been busy doing other things so I kind of put this aside for, for a little while. Um, but now I'm back on it and I have the last element of the block detection in place now. Um, I had already installed my first BDL a few weeks ago, actually a few months ago. Uh, got that working then I started on the second one which is uh, my, my B unit. And now I just installed my C unit, which is um, right here. The idea that I had, and I'm glad it's, it's uh, following through all the way, is that um, I reserved each BDL-168 for each section of the layout. Um, this way I can track things better and easier. So um, the, the BDL-168A, which is this one here, is basically controlling all of the mainline tracks um, the BDL 168 B this one here is controlling all of the short line and other uh, tracks um, on the main level both of those are in the main level and then this one that I just added now the C unit is going to be controlling the upper level um, sections and I'm gonna have some left over so I'll probably use the, the ones that are left over for things like uh, you know the yard so I can show the train coming in and out just like the leads uh, or I might even split very very long sections uh, from the main from the main level into smaller sections and I'll use those extra inputs to uh, assign those sections so it's looking very good I love the way it has come out uh, as far as the neatness uh, I'm very excited about that part obviously I still have to get all the, uh, you know, the same same way as this, all the red wires to come in here for each section, each block, uh, at 16. But um, I decided not to turn it the same way as these. The orientation um, would have not been um, ideal if I if I went, you know, the other way because what's, what would have happened is this big wide uh, section of cables would have had to run all through here to get it to, you know, to come in this way. So I decided to turn it sideways. Um, this way I can run all the, all the wires here, uh, collect them and then run them up. So I wired everything up the same way as the other ones. So let me just kind of walk you through that. Um, the, uh, the yard comes from here, from the PM42, which has the four districts. So the yard is um, coming straight through out of the first district and going right to the rail. So that's got no block detection at all. That's just, it's like a regular bus going right to the yard. And what I did also is I ran it to the rest of the layout so that I can uh, connect all the industries to that as well. The reason being is that if something goes wrong either in the yard or in the industries, it's not gonna disrupt the uh, main line, short line, or upper level. So the next district down, and you can see this like uh, green tape. I hope the, the lighting doesn't change the color on the video, but this is green, <laughs> believe it or not. That's green. And that's designated for the A unit. And it's also designated to control all the main line uh, on, the main, on the main level. Um, and the green correlates with also the green uh, B rail so that I know where it is in case I need to track it. And it also correlates with all the green tags that are running out to the layout. So um, then the third district is blue. I put some blue tape there. Uh, again, same deal, it, instead of going to the A, now it's going to the B unit. And that is, so the blue is for the B unit and it's also for the, sh the short line. Um, and so I, I, I kept everything consistent. So I have the blue, which is for the B rail. Um, obviously the, the A rail is running through into the splitter and then into every zone. Um, but I kept the blue for the blue tags. This way I know that everything that is blue tag has to go into the B unit. Now, the only thing is that the some I ran out of zones. I had more than 16 zones on the main line. So I had to borrow some from the B unit. And that's why 
I've split some of these. So you can see this, this both colors. So what this tells me is that even though 12B is connected to the blue or the B unit, it's still part of the green main line and it's still part of zone two. So if for some reason this particular wire shorts out on the track, I know that it's part of the A, uh, uh, part of the green uh, power district, and I know that it's connected to that BDL in case anything in track. I have a few of those split sections, so as you can see, it goes down to 12B. So it would be 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. It would be up to that, and then the rest is all for the uh, short line. Obviously, the short line has less sections. That's why it didn't bother me that I was borrowing from this unit. But uh, you'll see some other um, split situations here. And um, so that worked out nicely. And it's so easy to track with the color coding. I really, I'm really glad I did that. Uh, in fact, I had a problem and I went right to it and I was able to find it. There, there was like a ghost. There was like a... <laughs> Um, so there was a section that was being detected without a train being on it. It was just flashing on and off, and sometimes it would just stay on, and sometimes it would just stay off. And even when the train went on, it was still having a problem. So I'm, um, I, I, fi I figured out what section it was from JMRI, and I said, oh, okay, that block is number uh, 13. And I was able to track it immediately uh, without having to go, like, pulling on the wire and seeing which wire is jiggling and, and tracing it all the way back. I just literally went up to the tag and I was able to figure out where, where it was and it was so easy. Um, and the problem ended up being that I had one of the feeder cables hooked up to the section correctly, but another part had you know the same tracks, same feeder. It was supposed to go to the same wire and I ended up connecting it by mistake to the regular bus, which is this one here. And so it was conflicting. I didn't know which way to, to throw it uh, as far as detection. So as soon as I disconnected that wire, everything went right back to normal and now it's working uh, perfectly. So um, let's continue here. Um, what I did next was obviously run the same wiring, but sideways to this one. So there's your A-rail, there's your ground. Uh, power is the same way as always. You know, I, I, I'm really happy with this to have exactly the right amount of... Uh, uh, slots for uh, you know for for the for each unit so I labeled all of them and I got all the power running up and out into each uh, so each section so this is my PM42 that's my BDL 168A B and C so the C is obviously running that way and then you know I ran the, the ground up and combined it with the other ones and then up and they all terminate right there and then from there it goes to obviously the command station so that's everything is super neat super clear uh, and super uh, traceable so I'm happy with that now the the newest thing which I showed in another video as far as this project is is the um, computer um, panels so what I did is I took this really old laptop that I had I mean this thing must be like at least it's almost 20 years old I think uh, but it works beautifully. It's great. I, I always love the, the bios and I don't know why they went out of business, but uh, They stopped making them, but I still have mine and it's working great. It's still fast uh, But either way, I'm just running JMRI for the most part on it I have other little things, but I tried to clear it out as much as possible so that it would run smoothly uh, And from there what I did is I took uh, the HDMI out ran it to uh, a panel uh, display panel and then I, I I, you, you can't split it. It's not if you split it, you get the same image on, on both. Um, so the idea is to extend the the uh, pan, the uh, display panel. So I had to, since I didn't have another HDMI out, I had to use a USB out into this adapter that then switches the signal to HDMI. So that's how I got the second panel. And then so in reality, there were three panels that I'm using: this one um, and then the two up here. So I have these two connected and the nice thing about this is that um, I can't fit the upper level uh, JMRI panel and the lower level JMRI pa panel into one screen so I'm going to be able to have one here and one there and it'll be completely different detection but I can move them around if I choose to I can stretch one of the panels across both screens and you could see a very in a very large setting 
if I want to, or any combination of, of all that. Uh, so it's it's a really cool thing to be able to, you know, kind of be my own dispatch. So that, that's basically the last element that I, I was working on. Um, now the only thing is, you know, I'm starting to run wires. So I have my first um, powered block here, my first uh, detection block here, um, which I'm running up to the, through the corner here. And instead of running the path that I was choosing before, which is this way, into the rest of the layout, um, which is a very long path before you get up to, to here. You gotta go all the way around and then up and then over. What I did is I ran up um, and it's actually, I don't know if you can see it, it's gonna be hiding behind this. It's gonna go up, across, and then I'll, ha I'll have these uh, cable, you know, uh, organizers uh, run it across there. It's gonna go through there. I have more of this cable organizer there, and I can even hide that wire there. Uh, and then this is so close to the fascia or the uh, whatever you call this thing, this thing. Uh, I could just you know run it right there, and you can barely see any kind of uh, you know connection or wires hanging out. On this side, it's a lot further, so I didn't want to have like a piece of plastic you know cut, cut, cutting across that long. It just makes it look a little neater, I think. So. I'm running those wires, obviously they're going to go through and then I have these um, electrical clip things that open up, they just pop open, um, you can see here, they just kind of pop open and then you can just run the wires, so it's nice to keep them flat and organized all throughout uh, the top of this thing. Um, when I first built this bench work, I did not make that top wood, that piece of wood there that, that splits the uh, the two sides of the peninsula uh, wire accessible. So I, I didn't make any holes there. So now I'm like, you know, kicking myself in the butt because I'm, I'm drilling holes, but it's awkward and it's hard to get in there. But, um, you know, I'm only going to drill like a few access holes so I can roll, so I can run the wires down into the layout. And then once they run down, you know, they're going to go basically in between the uh, backdrop they run down and then they come out through through there, which is the way I, I was running them anyway. So this is the top of um, it's the top of this backdrop, but there's a little space there where I can uh, access the wiring. But the only difference is that I, originally when I was testing all the track, it was just one bus, and now it's you know it's going to have to be several wires that come down. Now it's not a lot, and I'm glad it's not a lot because I don't have a lot of room down there, but it's it's enough. Um, and what I did is I ran the very, the, the furthest point first. So that's coming, you know, from, from all the way to the other side where I showed you through here, then through that hole down here, and then it's coming out of here and it's running, you know, I gotta, obviously I'm going to put, um, more of these clips here to, to keep it organized, but it's running under. And then it has to run all the way to back there, all the way back there, because that's where the uh, the uh, um, turnaround loop is going to be in the other room, which is the bathroom. Um, so let me just take you around so I can show you what's going on. Um, the bathroom is here on this side. And if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I have this shower here. That does not work. It's just basically a closet now. It's, it doesn't, it leaks and it, there's just all kinds of problems. So we're not using it at all. Um, that's why I decided to run my, my tracks through here. It just created a, a lot easier um, uh, curves and, and it gave me a lot more space to work with. But the cool thing is that that wire goes into this RCA plug. The two wires, the, the, you know, the B rail and the A rail go right here. So I have this um, this panel with the loop that goes around like this, and it turns the whole train around here, and it goes right back in through here. Now, what you don't know is that, uh, and I'll make another video of this, but this whole vanity just pops out, and the train goes through there. So when I'm not using this thing, I just pop it back in, and it doesn't. You can't even tell that that's supposed to be that you know that there's going to be trains running through through so here. That's that. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. And uh, I'll be back with the next part, uh, which will be hooking up all the, all the blocks. Okay.